Hi, this is Lane, VP of Engineering at Liberty All Food Services, here today with a home edition of a Liberty Educational video. This video is on porosity and permeability, two key parameters in oil and gas production, and especially the latter one is a very important parameter that drives frag design choices. So let's start with the porosity. And I'll start with the question. Is this glass half full or half empty? Now in my mind, it's always half full, but I do understand in these times, tough times with coronavirus and low oil prices, that many of you may think that your glass is really half empty. I really hope for all of you that your glass will be half full or maybe even more than that very, very soon. Just hang in there. Second question, and it's about this glass. This glass here, and I'll show it to the camera. This glass is filled with beads. Now, is this glass full or empty? Well, it's actually a trick question because none of, the, none of these two choices is true. It's actually only about half full. It's just about as full as this other glass. And I can show you that by pouring the contents of this half full glass into the glass with beads and it actually all fits in. Porosity in rock provides storage for water, oil and gas. Oil is not produced from some massive downhole cave or lake. It comes from small interconnected pores, similar to the exaggerated pore space shown in the sponge on the left. The thin section on the right shows a see-through visual of sandstone, showing sand grains in white and pore space in blue. Sedimentary rock was made millions of years ago from eroded particles that do not fit well together. They leave some open spaces when packed. Permeability in rock is the ability to flow liquids and gases through pores. This first picture is a representation of pores in dark colors around grains in white. This overlay shows flow velocities. Note that the higher velocities are possible in wider channels. Let's talk about the experimental setup to test permeability. Now we can do simple tests at home, but I've got the uh, more of a Cadillac type test that we can do here as well to show you what happens as a consequence of different permeabilities in rock samples, or in this case here at home, uh, with different mesh propens and different materials. What I've got set up here are four different um, columns with water in them, and they also contain, in this case, marbles, steel shot, thank you Ben for that, and then 30 mesh and 80 mesh propent on the right hand side, and thank you Scott for those. Now, the setup that I have here is very simple. I've got a gate valve, above an aquarium that will just be used to collect all the water that I'm going to pour through. But the gate valve can be opened like that. And you may have this uh, in your porta potty for camping and things like that. Uh, that's where you find these gate valves. Um, the reason I need a gate valve is I need to have high throughput instantly so that the valve itself is not the bottleneck for flow. Now you can also do this at home in a much simpler setup, a little funnel. And I've got the funnel filled in this case with some steel shot that you see right here. And we can simply pour water uh, through this funnel. Uh, and this funnel actually has a little bit of a mesh uh, material in it so the the beads don't or the the steel shot doesn't fall out and we can simply pour some water through this to maybe have a measure of how permeable this material is just like that now in this particular case flow may be restricted somewhat by the funnel itself that i don't have that problem i don't have in my setup over here so what I've got here with these different materials, marble, steel shot, 30 and 80 mesh profit, I've actually chosen the, uh, the diameter of these beads to become about 3.2x smaller every time. And the nice thing about that 3.2x is the square of that, a factor of 10, is how permeability changes. And the square of 3.2 is about 10. So permeability changes by a factor of 10 between every one of these setups. Now let's actually do some testing and determine how long it takes 
for this column of water, four inches above the inner face here, and then a column of six inches of uh, these different materials, I want to measure how long it roughly takes for these four inches to drain into the pack and how, you know, the, the amount of time it takes to, to get there. We are planning four tests. The grain diameters in each of these tests reduces by a factor of 3.2. As a result, because the permeability is related to the square of the diameter of the grain samples, the permeability changes between test 1 and 4 by about a factor of 10 between each test. As you can see in the table, permeability is about a million darcies for test number one and reduce it, reduces to about a thousand darcies for test number four. Now let's do some tests. So what we'll do now is we will open each individual gate valve over here and then measure how long it takes for the water level to recede down to the level of the material that we're testing. We first start the clock and then maybe we'll go on like 10 seconds, etc. when the clock when the clock is going. Open the gate valve at a specific time, right at 10 seconds. Well, that was just a fraction of a second before it was down to the level where it needed to be. Do it again on 20. I was roughly counting a few seconds. Again on 30. Definitely taking quite a bit longer. As we see that level recede down to the level of the interface there. And my guess is it's about there right now. So 56 seconds. We'll do this at 60. So maybe in summary, what I've seen, a fraction of a second here a couple of seconds here. Uh, this was about 25 to 30 seconds. And we started this one here. It's slowly receding, not much water coming out. Um, and we started this one right at one minute. And as you can see, we're getting very close now. There's still a sliver left before it touches the interface. But very close here to about six minutes, five minutes, 50 seconds or so, it is touching the interface and uh, the column, the four inch column has disappeared. Took almost five minutes or 300 seconds for it to disappear. Dropping the water level by four inches between test one and four takes about 0.3, then three, then about 30, and after that, for test number four, about 300 seconds. This change is roughly proportional to the permeability changes. Now we can also extrapolate these tests in, into additional tests that we could do for sands and shales in the same kind of setup with the same test conditions. Going all the way to 16 tests on the far right to the lowest permeability shales in existence that still produce. Of course, we would need to wait a long, long time to see the water level drop by four inches in these tests, up to 10 million years under the same conditions. In reality, of course, for shale and sand production, there's extra reservoir pressure that helps, way higher pressures than the atmospheric pressure column uh, provides here in this example. And also, in reality, for shale production, we create much, much more surface area that leads to more economic production of wells under these circumstances that produce from these shales. This graphic represents general fracking strategies for sand and shale. I'm showing general permeability ranges for rock and propant, spanning many orders of magnitude in permeability. These frack strategies are mostly driven by changes in rock permeability. For example, on one end of the spectrum, when flow through rock is relatively fast due to high rock permeability, Frack design is focused on the frack not being the bottleneck for production through higher fracture conductivity and better propant permeability. On the other end of the spectrum, 
when flow through rock is slow due to low rock permeability, fracks need to be spaced close together so that oil and gas molecules don't have to travel so far. The focus is on creating a complex network. In our work at Liberty, we can determine how these physical limitations impact economic trade-offs. So in conclusion, Porosity and permeability are key parameters in oil and gas production and in fracking. Understanding how they impact oil and gas in place, production and frac design choices is very important. And Liberty would be happy to help you with your frac design choices and pump your jobs. For more information, please visit us at libertyfrac.com. This was Lane at Liberty. Thank you for watching.